what have Patrick Swayze, Steve Jobs, our own Brian Lenehan and Ruth Bader Ginsburg all got in common? Well, they all died as a result of pancreatic cancer. Um, Ruth yeah, Bader Ginsburg being the most recent, and of course, the late Brian Lenehan. What a lovely fellow he was. I met him on a number of occasions. Of course, he was the man, the bank bailout, and was involved in the middle of that, and he wasn't well, and he battled on right through it and did his best for the country. But they all died. All those famous people died with pancreatic cancer, and it's known as the silent cancer because you don't have many symptoms, and when they do appear... In most instances, it's too late. Well, I'm joined on Late Lunch now by a Kells PhD student who's carrying out research into pancreatic cancer. And I'm delighted to say hello this afternoon to Taylor Coyle. Hello, Taylor. Hello, thanks for having me. Not at all. You're very welcome to the show. Well, I I know your story. Uh, Will you tell my listeners why you are where you are today with this research? It's very personal to you. It is very personal, yes. So I done my undergraduate in genetics in UCD and I always had an interest in science and always wanted to pursue a PhD. But in the week of my final year exams, my aunt, who I was very close to, got diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and got told she had a year to live. Um, she passed away five months after that and I thought just my eyes were opened up to the lack of research and basically that it's predominantly incurable and I thought it was a good field to use my skills and yeah I started my PhD project so I'm just going into year two now. Well done to you and of course I I do know your mam Wendy and we spoke uh, when your aunt Kim Allen was unwell at that time and sadly she was only 34. Yeah she was. My word all too young and uh, she had children and I know um, oh God it was just one of those stories that really would leave people deeply upset so here you are it's a very personal to you and I mentioned those famous names there as well just remind me again I know I said it there this is something that creeps up in the dark of night out of the blue that you, you feel okay don't you and when it arrives it's very difficult Yeah, so it has asymptomatic progression until a very late stage. So usually when people show symptoms, it's either locally advanced or metastatic, meaning it's already spread to other organs. And the symptoms often overlap with common complaints. So people put off going to their GP and and it can be too late then. So your research or your particular focus, where are you pointed with this? What are you looking at? Uh, So I have a few areas that I look at, but one is that I look at cell models of resistance. So one problem patients face is that the drugs only work for a short period of time. And the cancer eventually gets used to those drugs and continues to grow. So I'm looking at how this happens and ways to improve the efficiency of drugs that are already available in the clinic for patients. And I also look at microRNAs. So these are small fragments that can bind to your DNA and they control many processes in your body. And like many things, these are irregular in cancer cells. So I purposely irregulate them in the lab and see what effect it has on the cells in the hope that we could maybe use them to either detect or maybe treat the disease. Detection is the key, isn't it? Because we can tell so much, I'm sure, as you know now, a a blood test can tell a myriad about a human being and, and pick up things, but still it doesn't get the pancreatic cancer. No, so early detection is is key to survival because... On diagnosis, only one in five patients are usually eligible for surgery. And surgery is really the only curative option for patients. So it really is important to try and research better early detection methods. And of course, as you said a moment ago, if it's not picked up and surgery early on is the key, it has moved to other parts of the body. And then at that stage, it certainly is too late. Is there another aspect to what you're doing as regards the uh, chemotherapy? Yeah, so the the resistance that I'm looking at is basically when the chemotherapy stops working. So I'm trying to look at why that happens and how we could possibly stop it from happening so frequently in pancreatic cancer. And the the numbers are startling, aren't they, as regards survival? What is it, about five to 600 people each year in Ireland are actually diagnosed with this? Yeah, so about 550 people are diagnosed each year, but the five-year survival rate is less than 10%. And that really hasn't greatly improved in about 40 years. 
Mm, it's it's one of those areas and there have been so many advancements, as you know, with cancer mm-hmm. detection and care and prolonging life. It's remarkable. But this is the one that seems to have, you know, eluded or fox everybody. Is it because, is it, you know, we talk about the development of a vaccine, you know, and we hear what's happening here with the resources and money and people and everything and the cooperation that's happened. Is there a mm-hmm. lack of that, you know, that focus with this? There definitely is. So only about 2% of funding from research bodies goes towards pancreatic cancer. And I think that that obviously has a huge impact on how far the science can progress. So 40 years ago, the five-year survival rate for breast cancer would have been about 40%, whereas that statistic is now up at around 80%. And I really believe one of the reasons that it has made such good progress is because there's so many survivors who raise awareness and do massive fundraisers and those funds are essential for scientists to do the research. And you are being funded by the Science Foundation Centre, your work there at DCU. I take it this is collaborative, that you're working not in isolation, but certainly linked in with people all over the world. Yeah, definitely. It's a collaborative effect. So I have a team of supervisors who all have different expertise Um, I have collaborators in the US who help um, as a centre. The NICB is multidisciplinary, so you can have input from people of all different backgrounds and that all contributes to, to good research. And when you think of those names I mentioned, when you look at Steve Jobs and, you know, the wealth that that man had and what he had at his disposal, yet it was too late in the day for him. Yeah, it, it's, it doesn't discriminate so the money will not improve your survivals really money needs to be put into research and we we need yeah we need better outcomes for patients it's it's time now what about just back to your own situation and your families when you have somebody who dies from pancreatic cancer is there you know the possibility that this is in the genes of other family members that this should be monitored carefully So there is risk factors that can increase your likelihood of developing pancreatic cancer. There's more common ones like cigarette smoking, diabetes, age, but there is family history and inherited genetic syndrome. So if you have a BRCA mutation, for example, you have an increased risk, but that would account for approximately 10% of cases. You know, it's, it's not the general population. Okay, so that, that, that is not so much a factor you're saying to me, is that it, yeah? It is a factor, of course, but it's not the common cause of pancreatic cancer. Okay. Do you know, it's not what the majority of the population are going to, mm. what the cause is going to be. So how long are you at this? How long will you be at it for? And where is this going, your aspect of this research? Um, so I'm two years into four of my PhD. And after that, I hope to well continue it for as long as I can in a career of research and stay in the pancreatic cancer research field because as I said I think it's really important that more people get into this field and I really want to during my time at research focus on science communication and raising awareness of the disease because I think that that's really important for better outcomes for the patients. You're Raquel Lassie tell us a bit about yourself where'd you go to school there? I went to school in Eureka. Ah, sure, look where. I, what else did I expect? I was, there was no other answer on my page but Eureka. What a fantastic <laughs> school it is. And was this always like, was this aspect of, of your life and where you're headed now, was that something that you, you realised from early on or when did that, uh, you know, come to you that you wanted to go into this field of work? Uh, well, I always had an interest in science, which was probably sparked maybe around third year. I had a really good science teacher and I really just got into asking questions and just really wondering how things work and so on. And then I knew I wanted to go to UCD to do genetics there because, as I said, I wanted to do cancer research before my personal reasons anyway. But it was just that they kind of brought me down the road of pancreatic cancer in particular. Mm. And the STEM, we've often heard about this, uh, the STEM, which this is one of the subjects as well, and the encouragement of more ladies to get involved there. And that is happening. And I'm sure you see that as well. Oh, definitely. Like in my in my building, there's definitely more and more women um, yeah. in positions of higher positions and also a lot more other PhD students coming in. Like recently, there's been 
I think four new students, all of which are female. So it's really good. Yeah, yeah, it's good to hear. And it's great to hear that that initiative, the STEM initiative, uh, is uh, yielding dividends in brilliant uh, female brains that are coming to the equation here to work on this. Do you ever feel like um, Kim sitting on your shoulder? But she definitely pushes me forward and I am motivated by her. Like doing a PhD is hard work and it can be tiring, but when I remember why I'm doing it, it's easy. Ah, isn't that great to think that she's with you all the way? I'm sure looking down on you and egging you on to uh, work on behalf of many others who are going to travel this road with this silent cancer in the uh, months and years ahead. Look, I wish you well. You're you're doing great work on behalf of so many people in the years ahead. I wish you success with it and continued success with your studies as well. And thank you so much much for joining me on the show today. Thank you.